Hi there, I'm Ads, and on this show, we do things the Ads way. The Ads way isn't good or bad, happy or sad, love or hate. The Ads way is life, without intent, without purpose, without conception. Beautiful, crazy, and sometimes a little stupid, the Ads way is the very backbone of existence. Oh, God, you are just delectable. <laughs> oh, I'm going to enjoy you. Mm. You are getting sleepy. What? I'm not... I'm not getting sleepy. What are you on about? You are getting sleepy. Sleepy? <laughs> sleepy. Well... <laughs> you are getting sleepy. <laughs> the table... <laughs> the table does look comfortable. Ads, I called you here for a reason. In this form, I am known to you as Bads Robinson. But that was a personalised archetype of deception created by the holistic psyche. If we are to become whole, you must assimilate me and I you. By one means or another. We must free the mana figure and you must become the hero in your conscious life. And then, and only then, can we really have some fun. So, are you with me? Or are you against me? Mm. Mm. <sighs> oh. Finally. I know what I must do. I'm gonna become the hero. So you may be wondering, why are you in a different setup? Well, you know what I'm like. I break things very, very often. I don't know why, maybe it's my lack of common sense. Maybe it's that I don't treat my items very well or with the respect that they deserve. But maybe you don't think necessarily needs a box, but you just wanna give it added protection. Maybe you could double jiffy it. But yeah, I'm just gonna slip that in one of those like that. So I thought I would do a very quick segment on a viewer requested video. Sue from Sue's Pals of Shame, if you haven't checked her out, then check out the channel. I'll put a kind of little graphic up there, superimposed image or something. But yeah, go, out, go over and check out her channel. Uh, she requested me to do a video on how I package paintings. Now, do you rem remember this one? I got it from a car boot in a little job lot for 70p it worked out at. Uh, this sold over the weekend. I can't remember whether I got 19.99 or 24.99. I believe it was 19.99 plus my postage. Went pretty quick, went within a week or so, so I was pretty happy with that. A nice little quick turnover on this painting. So I am gonna show you how to package that. But I thought, you know what, it's Monday morning, I'm getting things out, I'm getting things sorted. Normally I do my packaging on a Sunday, but yesterday I actually went out for a family meal uh, for my auntie's birthday, so I didn't do any packaging yesterday afternoon. It was about half five when I got back and I just had a few other things to do and I didn't do my packaging as normal. So this morning I'm kind of doing some packaging and I thought prime time to share with you how I package some of my items. So no kind of rambling on this one. Obviously it's Monday morning, I need to get these things out. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna get into this and I'll just kind of share with you very quickly how I package some of these items. So Mario Kart uh, Double Dash, uh, GameTube game sold. Now some of these obviously will be in uh, the sales update, so I'm not really going to go into like what price they sold and you know how much I paid and all that sort of stuff. I'm, it's just going to be kind of 
a packaging video. So yeah, that one sold there. Now I've just got an eBay Jiffy bag. These are giving out with the vouchers, the featured shop or the anchor shop. You get a £10 or £20 packaging voucher respectively, depending on which store you have. You can buy them as well, uh, as I have mentioned in videos on the past, in the past, but um, they're quite expensive for what they are, so I generally just pick them up with the free packaging voucher. So literally all I'm going to do with this, um, I know I'm being kind of a little bit patronising to people here, I'm sure you all know how to package something in a jiffy bag, but I just thought, you know, since I've got it to hand, I'll just do that. So yeah, simply just goes in there. I mean, you can double jiffy some of these things. I know people, some people might have a tendency to do it, maybe, uh, you know, they just like to go a little bit overboard on the packaging or something. I mean, as well, if you've got maybe a, a higher value video game or something higher value um, but maybe you don't think necessarily needs a box but you just want to give it added protection maybe you could double jiffy it but yeah I'm just going to slip that in one of those like that also I've got a, a He-Man figure so I may as well very quickly do this one so this is a He-Man Master of the Universe figure uh, Master of the Universe figure um, I don't know uh, what kind of guy this is, or, you know, what character it is. I'm not really into He-Man, obviously. It, it wasn't my generation, really. Um, but, yeah, so there's that one there. So I'm literally just going to slide that in there, and we are pretty much done with that one. So that's that one there. So next, I've got this Huntley and Palmer's sort of John O'Groke shortbread uh, with this kind of... What would you say, like 18th century figure on there, 1700s or something? Um, but, yeah, pretty cool. I don't know who that is, actually. It might be a famous general or famous some, someone... Famous military figure who I don't even know it is. Is it not like... No, it's not Nelson or something, is it? I don't know. You see, I'm terrible with this sort of stuff. But yeah, it's probably someone really obvious and really famous, and yet I'm none the wiser. Um, might be to do with my lacking in common sense or something like that, uh, or general knowledge, but yeah, I don't know. It's probably someone famous. But yeah, I don't know what they sold for, I guess, around... 12, 13 quid. I don't think it will have been a lot. It might have only been a tenner plus post or something. So yeah, we're just going to pack this one now. Um, oh, actually, I need a... Look at that. I actually got one of these boxes, but I don't think that's going to... No, it's just going to fall shy of, of fitting. So what I'll do is I'll have to get another box and I'll pack that one up for you in a second. Right, so I've just been and got a bigger eBay box. Now, this might be a little bit too big for it, but to be honest, I'm not waiting for my boxes for half an hour just to find like a perfect, perfect one. I want to get it out, I want to get it sorted. This should still go as Royal Mail Second Class as well. Actually, I might do Hermes because it'll be under a kilogram and then I'll get it a bit cheaper. But yeah, so that should be cool anyway. So yeah, I'm just going to pack this up. I literally, I'm going to probably speed this up or something. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. But yeah, I will show you like kind of the inside of the box, how I'm sort of package it, packing it in, and then obviously I'll seal it up as well. So yeah, without, without further ado, we will get on with this. tip use void fill for free like newspaper and stuff where you can other than the bubble wrap that you have to pay for um i don't do it all the time sometimes i'm a bit lazy and just prefer the bubble wrap because it takes a while to like put peel off all the paper and stuff so sometimes i use the bubble wrap a bit too much but i really should learn to use more of the, the free void fill but yeah that's what i'm doing today anyway i'm using the free void fill <laughs> very well but the uh, tin is in the middle there wrapped in a small little bit of bubble wrap obviously it's not something that's going to really break or anything I mean you might get the odd dint if you don't pack it well but you know it's not going to need tons of bubble wrap or anything you can see that this box is slightly big for it really you know I've had to pack it in quite well around the outside because there's quite a bit of void uh, void space but you can see I've just packed it in with a load of newspaper you can get newspaper free from supermarkets and stuff like that so what I'm going to do is probably put like a very very small layer of bubble wrap or possibly another little bit of newspaper and stuff on top and then close it in and that'll be that one done and there we go one little tin package you can see there you know you can chuck it around you can do whatever you want with it it's not really going to break or anything so yeah nicely uh, tightly packed in there that's the first one done so i got this wrestling belt here now what i've done is actually kind of flipped it over and then kind of tied this bit a little bit tight around here so this bit goes around here because i want it to fit 
in this little kind of pouch here. I thought that this actually makes quite a nice little fit for this uh, wrestling belt instead of like packing it in a bigger box. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Don't know whether this will go as large. No, it won't go as large, like, will it? That, that'll be just about a small parcel. But yeah, so that one is going to go in there. It should make a nice little fit. Um, so yeah, pretty much, pretty easy on this one. I think I might whack this in bubble wrap first off and then just whack it in there. Um, and yeah, should be pretty easy. So, uh, you can see that it fits in there fairly nicely lengthwise. Depth fits not so brilliant. I mean, it should be okay because this is mainly just bubble wrap here. So, if I could probably like kind of press that down, compress that down a bit, and it might just go quite nicely. Probably be a bit bulgy, but we'll see. So, yeah, that's basically all I've done for that one. I might put something down the side there, like a little bit of newspaper or something, and then just close it up and just kind of flatten it down a bit. Um, and yeah, that one will be ready to go. Right, so you see there, I've done that one. Uh, you can see it's probably a little bit bulgy, but not too bad actually once I've flattened it down a bit. Now, with this one, I'd be tempted to wrap it in a little bit of black cling film. And here's one I made earlier. So, can you see this one? This is like a little copper trough thing, actually I got from a car boot not long ago. Um, also, I label all my items as well. Oh, you can't even see that. Let's let's do this, right. Can you see that there? Copper tray? Probably probably not, because it's terrible lighting. But yeah, I label all my items as well to make sure that I know what's in the boxes. But I uh, wrap some of them with this black cling foam. If they've kind of got boxes with tons of livery on, or that maybe on even some boxes that are maybe slightly weaker sometimes i wrap them in this also it gives them a little bit of water protection as well um so sometimes i do that and it makes them look a little bit nicer if you are about those aesthetics with parcels i know certain people won't be bothered about that and sometimes i'm not to be honest but yeah so that's that's pretty interesting it might be something that i will do uh with this one just because it's one of those boxes that I feel would like a bit of black cling foam around it. It's one of those boxes that's a little bit flimsy um, and just could do with a little bit of a nicer look with that black cling film. So I might do it with that one, um, but if I do that, I'll do it later on. I'll get on and pack the next item now, and then I'll show you packing that painting at the end. So yeah, so I just want to show you that one. Actually, while we're on the theme of ones I made earlier, I'll show you something else as well. So also, if you're wondering how to pack plush toys, you know, I'm sure you're not, but if you are, then I use these uh, little poly mailers. These are the recyclable ones you can see from Kite Packaging. I get them off Josh as well from his eBay store, um, but orig originally from Kite Packaging. And this is like a little owl plush toy. Uh, now I have actually wrapped this in two of these. I always like to kind of, well, sometimes I double, um, but you know, du double poly bag items. Sometimes I don't. It just depends on the item really. But I have done with this one and I literally just shove it in the poly bag, whip the strip off, close it up and then repeat the process of doing it with two. So yeah, that's that one just in case you're wondering how to package plush toys. So next we've got this rather little quaint, nice, sweet kind of uh, USSR reindeer. It's made in uh, USSR. Um, yeah, it's nice. It's got a little bit of gilt on it as well at the top there on the horns and stuff. A nice little item. Now I've gone uh, for this smaller eBay box. Now again, this is probably a little bit big for it, but this is a single walled cardboard box. I like to pack my ceramics in double walled cardboard boxes. I didn't have any that are a slightly smaller size than this that would fit the item better. So instead I've opted for a slightly bigger single walled cardboard box so that then I can really pack it in tightly and it's got a little bit of space as well in there because I don't want to have a, a small single walled cardboard box for a ceramic item going out. I like to make sure that the item is central in the box if it's a single walled cardboard box and we've got a lot of pushing around it because of the lack of a, a stronger cardboard so yeah that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna do the same for this one now I'm probably gonna put more bubble wrapping with this one because it's a ceramic item and I use as I've mentioned before I use big bubble wrap if you're packaging ceramic items I would definitely say get some big bubble wrap because I just think it protects them more to be honest I think it really does cushion them more and to give you an idea of breakages because I know people will ask I know people will say in the comments well yeah it's all well and 
good your package of these items, but how many breakages you get. Because there's no point in you preaching to us about what you do if you're getting about 20 breakages every other month or something. I've only ever got two breakages. I've packaged thousands of items in the last four years or so. So, and that includes hundreds and hundreds um, of ceramics as well. So, it's a very, very low percentage. I would say something like 0.1, 0.2%. Possibly the highest is 0.5% of breakages I've had so it's very 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 low number of parcels um, so yeah I do what I do it works for me if you want to take on board some of the things I'm telling you then please do so if not go ahead and do it your own way because I do it my way so why would why would I expect you to do it my way you know go ahead and do it your own way that's kind of the whole gist of this but it's always good to listen to people, take on board what they're saying, and then judge your own way from that, or maybe take out a few different things of their way and amalgamate it from all this information you've collected from all these different sources, amalgamate it into your way of packaging items or your way of listing items on eBay or your way of sourcing items on eBay. That's the best way to do it. So anyway, I've got this little box here. I'm just gonna uh, package it, so I'll speed you up again. Right, so you can probably see it in there. I put one layer of bubble wrap in the bottom. Obviously, I've closed the box up here. One layer of bubble wrap in the bottom, and then obviously I bubble wrap the item, and then put lay that in flat there. And then I'm going to put another little bit of bubble wrap on the top, and then close it up nice and tight. Should be fine that one. I've done this many, many times. This kind of process with, with uh, items, packaging items that are ceramic, and uh, as I say, I've had very, very few breakages. So yeah, but you have that one, nice little parcel there, and good to get that one packaged. So there you go, that is that little USSR kind of reindeer packaged up and ready to go. Uh, so I think I've only got the painting to do now. So that's gonna be a little bit more tricky. And I know a few people will want to kind of know how I package paintings. Again, this is just how I do it. It's not the right way, not the wrong way really. It's just a way, I suppose, to do it. But yeah, so I'll get on and do that one now. Right, so I've got this slightly stronger box this time. This is a double wall, is it double wall? Yeah, it's just about a double wall cardboard box there. A little bit stronger and I'm not actually going to be putting this inside it because for one it won't fit oh what's that there I need to take that off there but yeah so it's not actually going to fit inside it so what I'm going to do is actually wrap it up tightly within this cardboard box so I'm going to cut down the box and kind of use it as a little bit of a cocoon I suppose is that the right word maybe not a cocoon maybe that's not the right word I'm going to wrap it tightly in it anyway then what I'm going to do is put bubble wrap around it and then black cling film actually I need to get some black cling film so yeah I need to get some black cling film but that's basically the process so now now, instead of me telling you the process, let's actually see the process. So, I've not wrapped it up completely. You can see uh, I've not actually put any um, tape around it or anything yet. But that's what I've done. That's what I was talking about. Just kind of wrap it up like that. That's going to be pretty strong. I don't know whether it's kind of it's kind of once round. It's not. Sometimes you, when you've got quite a big box, you can sometimes kind of wrap it round so that the cardboard goes round twice and it gets a really really strong fitting round it. But yeah, I'm just going to tape this up now. Tape these little flaps up as well. Maybe put a little bit of newspaper and stuff inside there so it doesn't kind of move. Because sometimes what what's happened in the past when I've been a bit inexperienced at doing this is um, when you've got something like a painting or something like that in one of these kind of slips is it can move down the side a little bit up and down so if you put a bit of newspaper or something in there then that'll stop that happening and then it won't move or anything so I'm probably gonna do that and then obviously tape up the sides and then what I'm gonna do is as I say put some bubble wrap around it So that is all kind of taped up, packaged up now. This is actually pretty firm, pretty strong, pretty robust. But I do like to wrap it in bubble wrap just to give it that extra little bit of protection. That's what we're going to do now. Basically it, that is a um, painting package essentially. You can see on the sides there I've got my little tape to kind of um, 
wrap up the black cling film. Now this is quite sticky, um, but I do tape it up anyway because I don't just want to rely on just sticking it down kind of thing and hoping it stays there. So I just tape it over so then it stays in position. Now that's got a layer, uh, actually on one side it's kind of got two layers of big bubble wrap on as well as the uh, cardboard. And then obviously quite a few times round, probably about five or six times round, maybe even a little bit more with the black cling film there. So that is pretty sturdy, That nothing's really going to happen to that. Now if I had glass, because obviously this painting didn't have glass on, but if I did have a painting with glass on, then I may be tempted to wrap a few times round with uh, cardboard, with like a cardboard box, rather than, because this was only wrapped around maybe once, possibly twice, but what I'd try and do is wrap it around a few times with cardboard, wrap it in really, really tightly, you know, make sure it's in really, really tight, possibly even put um, a piece of cardboard like on the glass before I wrap it up in cardboard that way so then the glass is kind of protected because sometimes what you get well a lot, a lot of paintings you get like a little rim don't you where the frame there's the frame and then there's a little bit of a kind of a depth before the glass so if you get like a piece of card that kind of covers in that little gap between the glass and the and the edge of like the frame, then that's good as well because then there's there's not really any gap there. Then you start wrapping around the cardboard a few times, then put a little bit of bubble wrap on. And also if it had glass, I might go around a few times with a big bubble rather than just once. Depends it really depends on the painting and how I feel about it, how I feel about packaging it and if I feel it's, you know, if if it's going to break if I don't do it really that well. So yeah, it really depends on the item you're packaging. But um, then obviously maybe wrap it around a few more times and then even still go around maybe a few more times with the black cling film. I say it really depends on the painting. It really depends on the situation. Like with anything, like with anything you're packaging really, it depends on the item. You have to judge it by a case by case basis when you're packaging something instead of just thinking, oh, well, I'm just going to do it one standard way forever. There's not kind of one standard item we're selling or if, you know, if you're selling, let's say, used items, you're always going to come across something new and therefore if it's a new item that you've never had before, you need to approach packaging it in a slightly fresh way. Otherwise, you may end up just packaging it fairly half-heartedly, not really with due consideration to the fact that you've never packaged something like that before and therefore you may run into breakages or problems when it's entering the postal system or if you've got a courier like Hermes, you may have problems that end too. So uh, yeah, it's just about judging it on a case-by-case -case basis. But with that being said, that is how I pack my items. Uh, obviously, for Sue there, that is how I pack my paintings. That's just kind of one example. There. So yeah, with that being said, I'll leave that segment here and uh, I will see you in the next one. So see you very soon, guys. Hi guys and welcome to a haul video. So you may be wondering, why are you in a different setup? Well, you know what I'm like. I break things very, very often. I don't know why. Maybe it's my lack of common sense. Maybe it's that I don't treat my items very well or with the respect that they deserve. Or maybe it's just coincidence, I'm not sure. But I've broken a tripod, so I can't use my little mini desk tripod for over there. And we've got to do this little setup until another one arrives. So, I mean, I quite like this setup, really. We've got a nice little light up there. We've got the stuff on the bed. It, yeah, it's quite nice. A bit more relaxed, I feel. I think this setup is a bit more... Well, you know what? It's very good for my... It would be very, very good for my armchair philosophy channel, actually, this. You know, armchair philosophy. Yeah. Anyway, you get the point. Uh, there's a little plug there if you go over to that channel. I don't put much content over there so you'd be going over there and maybe only getting a video once a month but still you know anyway let's get on with the whole video you've not come here to see me rambling or talking to myself you've come here to see a whole video and if you've come here to see a whole video then you're in luck because i did actually get some items from the charity shops this week i did not strike out like sometimes i do so uh yeah i got a few items regrettably a couple of them i'm like Ooh, should i have really picked that up unfortunately this week in my dithering because of the fact that i broke my tripod and i've been messing around with all different lighting things i haven't summoned the 
conscientiousness. Again, running theme on this show, you know, the whole joke around my conscientiousness. But I haven't summoned the conscientiousness to do dollar prices this week. So unfortunately, we've not got dollar prices. However, what I may do, what I may consider doing is actually kind of putting them in there just slightly kind of thing, guessing at dollar prices, let's say. So let's say something goes for £30, I'll guess that it's going to go for around $38 or something like that. And I'm sure people will be okay with that because the lovely people of the internet, a lot of them, 80% of them, Okay, okay, 60% of them do actually like me. So, um, I, I don't think we'd mind if I, if I just was a little bit less conscientious with that. So, with that being said, let's stop the rambling and let's get on with the haul. So, first off, we've got these couple of Dartington Crystal... Well, actually, it's not Crystal. Oh, no, it is Crystal. Yes, it is Crystal. It's actually lead free. I knew there was I knew it was free of something. Um, high performance lead free crystal. Just what you want out of your crafts. You don't want any of that lead in there. But yeah, so these are crafts. I did get two of them. They were stickered up originally at five pound or six dollars ish, five dollars and eighty cent or something. But then they were reduced to three pound, which is. $3.60, let's say. I love this guesswork. It's so much easier. I don't have to type in Google on my currency converter. Um, but yeah, so um, three quid for those. I'm pretty happy with that. And I'm looking at... It's a bit hard to judge, actually. There's one gone for around £11 plus, plus the postage in box condition. I think it might be a couple that have gone a bit less than that. I don't think there's any gone more than that. So I think I'm going to go around like the £11 plus postage basically. So I got that one and also I got another one. So I got two of these bad boys here. So pretty happy with that. Three quid each. I mean it is just a bread and butter item really. Oh also in dollars. £11. What's that in dollars? Oh now you're testing me. $14 shall we say? $15? I know the currency conversion isn't, isn't brilliant at the moment to be honest. Because or the conversion rate I should say. Because of a pound being weak or whatever it may be. But so I think it's maybe about only 14 15 but it would have been a time where about 11 quid would have been about 17 dollars or something like that I'm sure there would have been a time where it would have been a lot more than that actually But yeah, so that's those two there now. I paid a little bit of money for this actually um, Paintings, you know the whole theme of paintings me picking up paintings again It's a running theme on this show again, isn't it? Blooming hell all these running themes I tell you uh, I could do merch with all these running themes. What could I do merch conscientiousness? Oh, I, I've got to think of a good little pun on my conscientiousness to do some merch on God I'm losing so much money not doing merch on that. Anyway, we've got this lovely painting here. I paid 10 quid for it. It's by J Mills and it's very, very interesting actually because we've got this kind of border around it. Now, well, it's not a border, but the way he's done it, what he must have done, and this is really, really cool actually, is he must have put some sort of film or paper or something around it so that then he gets this perfect circle while he's doing it i suppose or something like that but it's very very interesting now apparently this is a local artist in fact uh, uh, apparently he or she i don't know i don't know whether it's he or she actually but they live in lost stock now if you don't know i live in lost stock so that's a very good coincidence there but yeah so it's this oil painting anyway pretty cool sort of midnight or night time anyway very interesting colors to it as you can see that really really well done actually um and i say i paid a little bit for this i paid 10 quid i mean it's not huge amount or anything i'm thinking of sticking it on for was i gonna go 30 or 40? i think i was gonna go 40 to be honest on this i thought 40 quid it deserves every penny of that nice little painting here and uh, we'll just see with it i might even be tempted to go a little bit more than that to be honest but yeah so i paid a tenner for it anyway and i thought a tenner i can't really go wrong to be honest because it is a nice little painting this and it's just yeah it's just nicely done it really is although it's not got a really well-known name attached to it or anything like that it's still a nice nice painting for what it is it still had a lot of effort put into it. So yeah, I was gonna pay 10 quid all day long on that. So that's that one there. Next, I've got these now. I've had these so many times before. These are just a set of EPNS uh, fish eaters or fish cutlery, whatever you want to call them. In this little blue box. Now I mainly get these in, what are they normally in? They're in black boxes mainly these, but I've, you know, I've seen them in blue boxes before. You have loads of different colored boxes for different cutlery. Well, not different cutlery, but uh, this EPNS cutlery. You see them in, I've seen red boxes, 
boxes. I've seen like dark green boxes, black boxes, blue boxes, a load of different ones. Anyway, so you see there's a little set of six in there. I'll get one of them out anyway, but first I just want to say I paid five pounds for that. Oh, also dollar prices for that other one. Ten quid, twelve dollars ish, ish, you know, we're, we're, we're guesstimating here. And then forty quid, forty eight. $49 ish, something like that. So five pound, six dollars ish, five dollars eighty, something, you know, something like that. So yeah, I just get one of these out. It just says it doesn't, no makers on this. Now, if it did have a maker, oh, I shouldn't really wave a knife around. That's very intimidating, isn't it? Let's put it down here. If it had a makers, then, uh, you know, depending on the makers, it might be more money. But this literally just says A1 EPNS. You won't be able to see it. So I hold it to the camera to no avail, really. But, you know, I'm going to do it anyway, aren't I? Um, so yeah, A1 EPNS, and I'm think I'm not gonna wave that around again. Let's put it down before I start waving it around, intimidating the good people of YouTube. So uh, yeah, I'm thinking. 20 quid plus post, possibly 25 quid, but to be honest, they've not got a makers on them, so that's gonna be, it's gonna be a bit harder to sell. I mean, if you've got a nice makers on them, that really does, that is a set selling point, really, and you can charge a lot more. Uh, so yeah, possibly 20 quid plus my posies, but I thought I'd pick them up at a fiver. I was buying a few things, I hadn't got anything at the time and from the charity shops, and I thought, you know what, I'll go, I'll, I'll go on those. So yeah, that's those. I have sold them many, many a time for that, and I've also sold ones with makers for quite a lot more. I've sold uh, these also, these fish eaters, fish cutlery, in sets of 12 as well, in box sets of 12, for around 40 to 50 quid, and, and possibly I might have even sold one for, for slightly more than that. But yeah, it always helps cutlery with, uh, if you get a good maker, so that's those there anyway. Oh, dollar prices, $5.80, cost me $6-ish. Or, what's that, in about $24? About $24, $25 on the sell price on these, uh, plus the postage, of course. So, yeah, that's those. Now, next. Now, I did pay a little bit of money for this. But, to be honest, I got all this stuff. Yeah, actually, I actually got everything here from a charity shop that I go to where I know the manager of. And recently, in fact, over the past quite a few months, he's been doing me some decent deals. And I kind of wanted to repay him a little bit, I suppose. So I think really, psychologically, I was thinking when I was in there and I was kind of compiling up a few of these items, I was thinking to myself, look, today I'm going to kind of just pay a little bit more, even if I didn't want to specifically. I was like, right, I want to pay a bit more because I want him to know that I appreciate him kind of keeping things back for me and, you know, and just kind of highlighting things when I'm in the shop. For example, I might miss something in the shop or uh, he might say I've got something in the back or something like that and he'll always point it out to me, let's say, if I have missed something. Um... And, and I'm grateful for him uh, for that. And also, he's, he's done me some good discounts in the past. So I kind of wanted to repay him a little bit in that way. And, uh, and and so I suppose I paid on a couple of these items, maybe a touch more than I normally would, a couple of quid more or something. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to do that because I need to do that. I know the phrase is keep them sweet, but I don't, I feel like that's a bit patron patronising to the other person. Like, I don't want to be patronising in such a way to say I want to keep them sweet or anything because I'm, I'm really good friends with this guy. Anyway, I don't need to keep him sweet or anything, but I just like to do that. You know, it's a good, it's a gesture of goodwill, I suppose, in a way. And also he was near in his target for the week and you know obviously my stuff that I bought here today took him over the target so that was nice as well so anyway I did pay 10 quid for this again I probably wouldn't pay 10 quid normally I probably would have wanted to get it a bit less than that but saying that for what it is it's a really really heavy piece it's over two kilograms possibly like three kilograms I mean it's very heavy I can't distinguish exactly because sometimes when you've got like a piece of glass like this and you're holding it let's say at the base it feels a lot heavier than it actually actually is but it's definitely over two kilograms and it's you know it's a fairly nice one it's nothing incredible it's by Royal Crystal Rock uh, is it Royal Crystal Rock yeah and they're okay but to be honest a lot of their stuff doesn't do brilliantly which is a shame because to be honest the quality that they produce is actually okay but it's just the prices on them aren't brilliant but for this one, it's a very big piece. I've not seen anything close to the weight of this piece on, or even really, I mean, I've seen a few that are close to the size, but certainly not the weight. Uh, some of the ones I saw on were a little bit uh, smaller than this, um, but no way near the kind of the weight of this and the, the gravitas that this piece has as well. It's very thick, it's very big, it's very bold. And therefore, I'm going to go 
a little bit higher than a lot of the ones that are on. I'm going to go for $29.99 on that. I know it sounds like a lot for what it is, plus my postage, of course. I think I can get it if I wait, if I wait on it, because a lot of the other ones, as I say, they're maybe on for around $14.99, something like that, smaller ones of these. Even smaller pieces are on for around a tenner. But with this being bigger, uh, with there not being one on there like this necessarily, I think I can command that after a little bit of waiting, as I say. So 30 quid plus my postage on that from a tenner. It's not the most brilliant margin. It's not necessarily a margin I look for. I would look for a little bit better margin. But as I've just explained, but my reasons for doing it were, were pretty clear. And also, uh, what else was I going to say? Dollar prices on this, that's what I was going to do. 30 quid. $37 ish something like that and uh, obviously plus my postage and then 10 quid $12 ish something like that so yeah that's that one there now I think these are prints looking at them a little bit more close. well I don't know I just think they are because a lot of the the items that are on eBay from this artist Jim Spencer are prints so I'm thinking uh, the possibility that it's an original is quite low you know it's not impossible but it's quite low that it's an original um, so I'm going off the basis that this is a print and uh, maybe my kind of picking up paintings is becoming a little bit cocky now and I'm doing it a bit too uh, easily um, because I'm just kind of picking them up like super easy without even really looking at them much I'm just like oh yeah that's like three or four quid I'll pick it up so yeah maybe I just need to wind it back a bit with the paintings and just think about it a little bit more um, but when I go when I find something new that I like picking up I just go for it I just I just go insane. I just go like 110% into it. I just keep picking up, keep finding them everywhere and just go. I just go insane with it basically, just constantly over the top. I paid £4 for this, even if it is a print, I think I could get around 20 quid for it. Possibly a little bit more, uh, maybe 25 quid. Um, because the originals command decent money, they command decent money. The prints, not so much. The smaller ones than these that have gone for around a tenner, not not a lot, lot at all really. But this is a big bigger one so I'm thinking of maybe 20 possibly 25 but I am going to have another look at it because it might not be a print I'm just thinking it is because the likelihood is that it is a print over an original but still from four quid it's not too bad but I do think I might be getting a little bit cocky a little bit ahead of myself picking up paintings and I might need to just be a little bit more considerate again goes straight back to the old conscientious thing oh my god it's there again anyway with that being said that's that one Four quid, four dollars sixty, four dollars seventy. 20 quid, 25 quid, 24 dollars, 29, 30 dollars, something like that. So yeah, that's that one there. I've actually also got another one of these. So I got this smaller one, uh, I paid three quid for this. Um, again, I think it's a, a print, it's from the same artist, his signature is up there, I don't know whether you'll be able to see that much. So that's the signature by the way, Spencer. And I typed in Spencer artwork and some artwork from this artist came up, so that was pretty cool because usually it doesn't. Normally what you'll find is on a lot of artists, the they just don't come up on eBay, they really don't. Especially, if, you know, the local artist or something like that. Um, but yeah, £3 for this one, I don't think I'm going to get a lot for this. Maybe £14.99 plus my postage, buy it now. But I, I don't think I'm going to particularly get a lot, especially if it is a print. But still, saying that, 3 quid to 15 quid, it's still a decent margin. Um, but considering some of the paintings I've been picking up in the past, I'd like to get them for maybe 2 or 3 quid and then flip them into 20 or 25 possibly even 30 in fact, a lot of the paintings that I was getting from the auction, I basically was getting them for a pound or two and flipping them into 25 or 30 quid. So it's not as good a margins as when I was getting them from the auction house. So I think that's what's kind of making me think, oh, maybe I've not done so well on these. But to be honest, looking at it a little bit more objectively, not putting too much of my emotion or feeling into it, it's actually still an okay margin, really, at the end of the day. So yeah, three quid on those, $3.60, $3.70, and then 15 quid, $18, $19, something like that, again, plus my postage on top. I might go for 20 to be honest. Sorry about that, I was just, my, it's low battery, so I'm going to have to be quick with the rest of this haul, actually. So yeah, um, $20, something like that, plus my postage, I think I was saying on that one. Um, but I'd say I might go for 20 quid on it, so uh, we'll just see with that one. And then finally, very quickly, this is the big daddy of the haul. Um, it's a brass umbrella stand. I forgot what it was marketed as um, on eBay, but I did. There is one of these on eBay. There's one sold as well. 
Did we say in? No, we didn't say it was Indian. I don't know. I can't remember, but it was some sort of brass anyway from some different country anyway. And it's this brass umbrella stand. Now, to my surprise, this goes for a lot of money on eBay. Uh, one has sold for £149. Uh, so that's free postage. Um, and yeah, you wouldn't really think of it looking at it. I mean, I'm, I'm, I, to be honest, I would have thought maybe about 70 or 80 quid, something like that, definitely. But um, maybe not 150. Anyway, so this was stickered up at 80 quid from the same charity shop as I got all this for. And obviously, as I mentioned, I know the manager in there and all the rest of it. He actually whacked uh, half of the price off this. So I actually got this for 40 quid. And it was actually after I got this that I picked up a few of these items uh, from around the shop. So because he had done me a, a solid deal on this of half the price off, again, that's why I think I may have paid up slightly on maybe one or two of the items there. Um, because, you know, I thought he'd done, me, he'd done me a really good deal on this, you know, half of off this price. And I'm going to make a fantastic profit on this. I mean, 40 quid into potentially 150 quid. I mean, yeah, that's free postage, so I've got to take my postage off. You know, by the time fee, PayPal fees, eBay fees, all the rest of it, uh, my time with listing it and packaging it and all that sort of stuff, you know, all that sort of stuff accounted for, that's going to take off a, a, a fair whack. But I'm also going to get a decent and profit on it so yeah I was really really happy that he did me a really decent deal on that and yeah can't really complain about one so that's a really nice item I'm glad to have got a, a over a hundred pound item for eBay because I've not had a, an over a hundred pound item for to whack on eBay for a while now I, you know I've had the odd sort of 50 to 80 pound item but I don't really often get tons of over a hundred pound items for eBay I do get the odd one for Amazon for you know for in my quarter four stock or whatever it may be but um you know I don't really get them for eBay as much so yeah nice with that one I'm gonna whack that on as soon as I can in fact I'm gonna do a load of photography with this stuff right away now so um, I think I'll just whack this down here so I've whacked that down there and I will wrap up this whole video straight away because I'm, I'm low battery so I, I'm just gonna have to be very quick so I don't know whether there's gonna be another segment after this in this show I'm really not sure what show this is gonna go towards uh, I've got so many different segments recorded and different ideas for different segments and I'm absolutely loving doing the ad show. I really, I want to be vocal on that fact because I really feel like it's what I've wanted to achieve for a while and I've put it in motion. Even though, like in the back of my mind, I've always wanted to do something with this channel and I've been trying all these different things for two, three, four years and nothing's really stuck. But I really feel, and I'm not saying that the ad show is going to be around forever, and I'm sure I will change again at some point. That's not what I'm saying. But I really do feel as if I'm grounded with this. I'm, I, this is this is me. This is what I want to do. I want to create some sort of YouTube show. You know, not just a, oh, a whole video here, a sales update here, a this, that here. I want to create a full experience, a full show. A lot of you have been following me for a while will know it's all about the ads experience. And I feel with an actual dedicated one hour show a week or 45 minute show a week or whatever it turns out to be you know I can actually do that and I'm, I'm just loving I'm on the second or third show now at the time of recording this this one will actually go for a fourth or fifth show but I'm loving editing it I'm loving the quality of what I can produce I'm loving exploring my own um, kind of uh, limits with my editing and and all that sort of stuff it's absolutely fantastic and I want to be vocal on that fact for you guys because I think that you guys, I think for the majority of people, they're enjoying watching it and uh, it's brilliant that I can feel like I've kind of, I'm doing something I love and I'm pushing myself with it and I'm achieving what I want, what I want to achieve with it. But also on the other side of things, my audience can appreciate it and love it as well because that is just a win-win and I'm so glad that after so many years of trial and error and trying different things and learning different things with both editing and YouTube and tags and this and that and the other, all the stuff that you guys know I've learned and I finally feel like this is it. I'm, I'm, I'm finally where I want to be with it. You know, I've, I've tried throwing all this stuff at the wall and a lot of it's just kind of fell off and now I feel yes. This is this is it. This is what I've been 
trying to achieve for, for all this time. Um, but without all that kind of pre-stuff, I wouldn't have been able to achieve this. So all that sort of stuff of chopping and changing and trying different things and doing this and doing that, I wouldn't have been able to feel happy and secure and, and, and feel a, a real great sense of achievement in what I'm doing right now. So I... Uh, I definitely don't reject that. I don't. Um, I don't have anger towards it or anything. It was a definitely 100% necessary that I needed to do all that stuff. That you know, I uh, some of it I enjoyed, some of that I didn't particularly enjoy, and kind of had to work through whether the things I wanted to do, the things I didn't want to do. But with all that, through all that, I've managed to get to where I wanted to be with it. So I'm just so happy and so grateful. And I absolutely, genuinely look forward to recording these videos, recording these little segments, and putting it together into a show that is worthy, well, worthy of, of the title, The Ad Show, I think, really. And worthy also of of people watching it, you know, and that's my main goal of people, you know, creating something that I feel that people can watch it and feel as if they've actually gained something from it, whether it's entertainment, whether it's education, whatever it may be, and that's brilliant and I feel that people can actually watch it and they're not wasting their time, they're actually watching something that is at least going to give them a little bit of a laugh at, at, at minimum or is going to um, give them some level of educational value or something. And yeah, I'm just so happy with it. I know that's a big ramble at the end there. Uh, I know I'm probably getting a bit emotional over it, but yeah, it's, it's absolutely incredible. So thank you very much for watching, guys. And I truly do mean that if this is the last segment of this particular show. And uh, yeah. Anyway, I will see you in the next ad show or I may see you in the next segment. So, uh, yeah, see you very soon, guys.